Welcome to Swift Coaches Academy, a podcast dedicated to bringing exercise and health professionals the uncensored truth behind what it really takes to succeed in the health industry with me, your host, Xenia Wood. As an accredited exercise physiologist and the founder of Swift Coaches Academy with almost a decade of experience, I'm on a mission to transform the lives of ambitious health professionals who want more and are ready to take action to create incredible impact and financial freedom. So join me as I speak candidly with industry leaders about the struggles and successes from within the trenches through thought-provoking conversations. Today, Zenia's conversation is with one of her OG biz mentees, personal trainer and massage therapist, Keith Downing. In just two years, Keith has gone from working for someone else to $17,000 months in his own company. This episode explains how Keith and so many other mentees have been able to create crazy success in such short periods of time with the help of the Swift Biz Mentorship. Yeah, um, yeah all I've done for prep today is just put my own company's t-shirt on just a tiny sip of tequila. So, <laughs> so we're ready to um, go. Let's do this. I'm, I, I love it. I think that means I'm ready. That's, uh, yeah. Ready, set, apparently, Keith. <laughs> oh, damn it. You s- <laughs> stepped on my joke. Uh, uh, um, so, a <laughs> little roundabout intro, but Keith Downing, um, if you can't tell with the accent, uh, our Canadian friend, um, and uh, one of my, well, from the OG, an, an original mentee for business. You've done education. You're a bit of a... I don't know, mentorship slot in terms of all the stuff we have on offer in the best way possible. (laughs) I was going to say fan. I was going to (laughs) say I'm just a big fan, but that slot, (laughs) there are synonyms, I guess. Yeah. Same same word. I I treat it with love. That's a loving word in my books. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. (laughs) Um, So why don't you introduce yourself and... um, maybe talk about how how we first met what you know where you were when you started and um today talking I guess predominantly about the business success that you've had um from where you were to where you are now so yeah who are you what do you do how far has it come yeah um hi um I'm Keith uh Keith Downing I founded Ready Set Health and Fitness about two years ago it'll be two years ago in January or this past January um when we met i was mostly just doing um massage therapy so i was a big i was working at a clinic at a physiotherapy clinic so i was just kind of changing sheets and rubbing backs over and over again and i really wanted to start doing more personal training stuff um i started following you um probably through the prescript chat or something like that through the facebook group and I just saw you're offering business mentorships. I'd taken a couple of their mentorships in the past and they would kind of just glaze over a business like, oh, you should sell programs. There you go. And then, um, yeah, we had a chat and you still sold me on six months. Um, at the time, I don't know, I think working for someone else, working about 40 hours a week, I would get like maybe like a, a really good month was 8K. Um, when I started ready set or started looking for my own clients, I think my first week of just, or first month of just doing my own stuff, I think I made around 600 bucks. Hmm. Um, and just to backtrack on this, that too, you, yeah. when you say you made 8k, you didn't pocket 8k, right? No, no, yeah. that was like, and that was, and that was, yeah, that was after someone taking a percentage like that. That was like, I was like really stoked on that. Yeah. So you got like half um, of that roughly, right? Oh no, sorry. I, I took home eight k. Oh, okay. I t- like I right. was so someone was taking forty. Per- someone was taking forty percent of that. So I should have gotten whatever at forty percent of that eight k is uh, okay. with the work I was doing, which is still good. Like I shouldn't. I don't want to knock that, but just thinking about like wanting to do more and wondering what that more was like. Um, so I yeah, I was one of your very first mentees. I think like Rad the one. very first group. Yeah. Um, and then now my most most recent month, I made um, just under seventeen k. That's huge. I haven't even um, heard those numbers yet. We haven't jumped on a call yeah. re- like this week yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So my you January, I was just looking at it now. Yeah, no, I was just looking at. It, I was like, oh, like 
I was a good thing. I have a, I'm, it's almost like I'm reading off cue cards here. And this month I made 17 K almost like it was 16, nine 42. So, um, and how much you pocket month. of how much you pocket of that? Pretty much almost all of it. Pretty much. Right. Uh, yeah. Minus your expenses. Right. But like, that's all, yeah. 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 Like that's, that's your revenue for ready set. That's, that's not my company's else. money. Yeah. Yeah. How does it feel to say that it's your company? It still doesn't really make sense. It still <laughs> seems kind of fake. Like it's one of those things. It's one of those things where just like, especially as you cross certain milestones, it, it seems like totally doable, but also like, it's, that's the thing whenever we like going from like 600 bucks to 10 K months, it's like when I, I would always just like dreamed of 10 K months being this huge thing. Cause I used to work at an before I was in massage therapist, I worked in an office job and that was just like, I wanted to hit that just cause like, just to make sure that I made the right choice in leaving my office job. And whenever I, I've crossed a milestone like that, like first it was 10 K and then it was, you know, hoping for 12 and it was 15. And then, um, I've always, it's always hard, been hard for me to get excited because by the time I got there, I was like, Oh, I could have done this the whole time. So it's like, it's like looking at it kind of from to like, since we're kind of like going back to the start, it's pretty crazy to think of like going from 600 bucks to just under 17 K. That is crazy. And it's like, it, yeah, you've put in a lot of hard work and effort because, you know, I, I can't take all or even most of the credit for that because mm. realistically, I haven't done anything. I haven't done any actionable things in your business to no. make this happen for you. Yes, I may have some strategies or some ideas or ways of thinking about things or things that you can utilize, but I think that the most important thing that I love, I've got goosebumps, that I look for and I love in the people that I work with are the ones who are really ready to take action because I think that's the difference, right? Like from where you were nervous for, to, to jump ship and working for someone else, it was the mm -hmm. action that you took that's helped you get to where you are versus some other people who may not take the same level of action or, you know, be willing to risk things that end up getting to like you don't get to 17k by accident <laughs> just yeah. so you, you're aware right like you this is intentionally yeah. on purpose you put a lot of fucking time and effort into this and you should be really proud of that yeah i'm working on that being proud of myself part um because as i mentioned earlier once you get there you're kind of like usually you just get there like oh okay like it, I, I, it's hard for me not to compare it to like coaching my clients, you know, like they invest in us because they aren't sure how to take the risks themselves. Uh, but usually when they get to 300 pounds, like let's say they do like a 300 pound, whatever, like deadlift. And it was like, Oh, okay. No big deal. Like they always seem to like kind of brush it off. Mm. And like, and I feel the same kind of thing for myself. It's just, it's really nice to have someone that, that knows that it's knows how to calculate the risk, I guess, and knows that you've made the calculations because it's easy to say to yourself that you haven't, that you're not ready. That's the easiest thing you can do when you're about to take a risk. Mm. Um, but having someone, and there's, it's not even like you're hand holding. It's just like you motherfucker, you got this and you're going to be okay. Like that's, that's the main thing that happens for me at least. Mm. And so like on that, you know, having that person who's really got your back or who is who is there to mm -hmm. sort of like pick you up when shit feels so hard that you can't do it and someone who's, I guess, you know, ahead of where you are in your journey. What other things have you found really helpful from working together with the business mentoring for the past two and a half years, three years almost? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, I always... I always stop when I say things like this because I know I just sound like my clients. Because <laughs> like, but just definitely having someone to hold you accountable, like having someone to week over week, like, okay, you haven't done this yet. Like, why? What's stopping you from doing this? What What's going on inside your head, or what What are the actions we need to take to get you to feel more comfortable doing this? Like, if you can't take this mega action, what are some a bunch of little things that we can take to get you to feel more ready? Or how can we show you that you're ready? is a big part of it and um where the group calls come in handy as well is just 
is just seeing how, like, I, I definitely, I don't want to, I'm not going to name names, but like, you know, when I started out, I was definitely like probably one of the less experienced people. And you can just kind of see the people drop off or not put in as much effort and just see kind of like places switch, you know, people started growing and that, that was helpful as well. It's just like seeing people who are close to you or whatever. And then you kind of go up together with them or people who were above you who started kind of like falling back and then, but also connecting with people who had been where you were already, like who might be seen like they're light years ahead, but they're really just like six months. Um, and so and closing that, really maybe closing that gap as well, right? Because someone could see yeah. years ahead of you, but then because of the, of mentoring and the actions mm-hmm. that you take, you can bridge that gap in six months instead of making it five years. Because yeah, that's that was time. the biggest thing for me, right? Like, and the reason why I feel so deeply passionate about wanting to help coaches with this shit is because I knew that I was a really good coach technically but Mm -hmm. I didn't have a fucking clue about business five years ago. And I was just riding on the wave of like my technical skills. And then when I went out on my own and I was still riding that wave and kind of like, yeah, things are good. And then I got slapped in the face because half my clients left over time. And I was like, fuck, I would prefer to do literally nothing else other than, you know, coach people. And I had to sort of pull that out. But I think the, and I mean, I know that you had a similar start in terms of you kind of really realized that you had to pull your finger out and you needed that support, that accountability. Um, With that, what do you think was the shift or what initially was the thing that was like, yes, I'm going to sign up? What made you say yes? I think that, like, it was honestly the same thing that wanted me to say no was the fact that it was six months, like signing up for that. I, hadn't, I don't think I'd committed to anything that long in a long time. I hadn't committed to relationships that long. <laughs> so I don't like, but the idea that this was something different than what I'd done before, I wasn't the the flash in the pan, like six weeks mentorship, you'll be, you'll be good to go. Like I was, um, I was like, you know what, like, let's give this a shot. How can I really, what, like, what could really go wrong as long as I just kind of show up and like it's six months like that. How could something bad happen in that length of time? Like as long as I just keep at it and, and go ahead. I was going to say, and then obviously as the mentorship evolved, it became a 12 month program. And I vividly mm-hmm. remember the amount of conversations and back and forth we had and the amount of nervousness and hesitation for you to re-sign. What happened then? Because I know that you were very on the fence about it. You were almost all the way tapped out. And then you jump back in and that's when shit really sort of went gangbusters for you and your business, right? Yeah. Um I think at the time. I I felt like I needed to, I'm like, okay, I've just learned a lot. I need to like implement some of these things. And um a part of me was like in with some coaxing from you, but like a part of me was just like it the implementation will come a lot easier if I just commit to another year. Like I think about I thought about where I was from, you know, we started up in like mid-December to to like June-ish. Um I thought about how far I come. Like, so another year, like I can't even imagine what will come after that. So um, understanding that, you know, it's, it's not a sprint <laughs> type stuff. And like, again, like it, I always just get up in my head. Cause I'm just like, I feel like I'm talking to it. Like my most annoying clients when I share why this has been beneficial, but it's just like knowing that someone believed in me, um, knowing that someone had an idea for me to, or, New new ones that someone thought I could do more than what I was currently doing, and and also knowing that they could get me there as well. Mm. That was I a think big those, part of it. I think those things are all huge, and mm-hmm. it's what I look for in my mentors too, right? Like I want someone who I'm almost nervous to show up for and not have shit done, because then you're really pushing the barriers of what your comfort zone is. And we know that that's when growth Mm -hmm. happens. So I think, you know, 
I often say when people are nervous about doing something like this and, you know, joining one of our 12 month programs or anything like that is that if you're not nervous, it's probably actually not right for you unless you, you know, you've worked with me before and you're like, let's fucking go. Um, But most people the first time, of course, you're going to be nervous. Of course, there's going to be some anxieties around it because it is taking a risk and it is doing something totally new and you're going to get put outside of your comfort zone. And if you're not okay with working through those feelings, you probably shouldn't be in business because they're going to happen. And, and, you know, just having someone or a team of people now who have your back by your side, I don't know. I think that the changes in the mentorship and the levels that we have now to, um, have you in a in a support network of people who are at a similar level to you? Like, I think that's been something that's been game changing or, or helpful. But what are your thoughts on that? Because you've gone from growth, which is our like level one program for zero to 100K in the first 12 months. And then you've gone into scale and then mastery in terms of, um, you know, scaling your business now. And so you've well exceeded the 100K annually target. And so we're looking to scale. Talk to me about like, I guess, how that transition was for you? Yeah, like the transition, like was tough. I think all transitions are tough, um, especially when it requires you to believe in something greater in yourself. I find that's always going to be a tough transition for people, especially when you're coming, like when it hasn't been that long. Like it's only been two years, and you're just like, oh, I need to scale. Like I only learned what that word meant. Like just recently, like I didn't really like, what does scaling mean? And um, so trying to, so figuring out that that was something I wanted to do was a weird transition as well. Um, But also, yeah, it's like realizing that you're not just dealing with day one shit anymore. You know, that's a big part of it. And like eventually realizing that it's not about getting clients. It's how many you're going to get each month and what you're going to do with them. And being able to have those conversations with other people who are still kind of going through that and figuring it out, you know, with like the Taylor and Jeannie, like open up their own spots and whatnot. It's just like, okay, like there needs, like there's people, other people doing it who are kind of at a similar spot that you were recently. And now they might be a little bit ahead of you. So it kind of, it also helps with a little bit of competitive edge as well to see that people are like, when you're just like, all right, I'm going to rock up to the meeting with the best news. I'm definitely going to have the best news, the most growth this week. I, I signed the most clients. And then just like, there's other fucking people who just show up with like just as much or more. And it's like, oh, damn, God damn, okay, well, next week's my week. And it's just like, <laughs> it forces you to keep showing up and force you to kind of want to be like, realize like, okay, I can, I can be like Jeannie. Like I can, I can be like Taylor and just like, I got this, you know, um, that part is super helpful. Cause when, you know, eventually if you're just like still figuring out how to, you know, do your sales pitch or anything like that, it's eventually you need to tell yourself that you deserve to grow and to deserve to be around people who are also wanting to grow. Yeah. And I also think that it, it it's, le- there's levels for a reason, like just as there are yeah. in life, like you need to, just like the, is it Maslin's hierarchy of needs where like you have to look after like your base level needs of like Mm -hmm. food, water, shelter or whatever, before you can start to look after, you know, um, I don't, I'm very, um, not great at at, at this, but like, you know, you can't look after the community and others until you can look after yourself. And so I think it's the same in business. If you're still worried about where your next dollar is coming from, where, you know, your next, whatever, so that you can look after you. You're not able to yet think and explore options about how can I service the community or how can I scale to help even more people because you haven't yet worked on you or you haven't, you know, done that. And that's intentionally why we've got those levels because we need to level up. And I think we get a greater sense of purpose and um, obligation if we then are able to not only service our lower level needs or our needs, but then we start servicing the needs of others like our clients, but then looking at how do we help the greater community or, you know, world or what if we want to, you know, think really big and it's like, well, it can't just be me anymore. Like I can't create the the things that I want to create, the people that I want to help because I'm only one human. And so I think, you know, the the cool thing about the scale program is that 
we are looking to get other people to enroll in our vision so that we can then get them with us to help more people. Um, and that's what I love about I love about working with with the different tiers and and where people are at. And it's not that I, you know, scale is better than growth or anything like that. It's like I was I was back down in growth when I started too. And we all have to work through the steps in the ladder and you can't skip steps um, to be able to to create the impact and really, I guess, service more people. And so meeting yourself where you're at with that and being okay with being like, this is where I am. And sometimes I recommend people just do grow. I'm like, maybe, you know, you do still need to work on some foundational stuff before we level you up. Um, so that, that's that been cool from my experience too. Um, what, I guess, what lessons personally do you think you've learned or or things you've learned about yourself um, through through the mentorship? Some hard questions. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly um, not pre-prepared. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's really great to have an opportunity to um, – to share that you don't believe in yourself and to to have to prove to prove yourself wrong that's always been a a big thing for me is like um as someone who kind of still finds himself in a moment like a lot of moments of self doubt it's just it's when you have someone taking you through the ride that they've been on or like they know the ropes at least um it's it's been really hard to to live in this realm of self-doubt when I'm, you know, going from 600 bucks to se- to 17 K, you know, so like, yeah. So I guess to shorten that answer, I just truly learned to believe in myself since it all has started. So and I, I would agree that that's something that I've really seen you foster and develop. And I think that something that people miss, especially when it comes to, I don't know, how big you are on manifestation. But I think that a lot of us, you know, there's a lot of people who sit there and like, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be successful. But unless that's backed up with action and you have yeah. support on the way and you have, you know, systems or people who've been where you want to go, then you're never, ever going to truly believe the things that you're saying unless you've actually created the things that you want and I think that that only comes with practice only comes with time and so yeah absolutely you can you can think about being that incredibly successful person or creating a ton of change in people's lives and at the same time the most important piece of that is I mean you can't manifest a million dollars and just sit there in your bedroom like you have to do something you have to take action in some way even if you invest in stocks and it goes up you invested in the stock so um, I think it comes through the little actions that you've done in terms of believing in yourself has been, I'm going to take a risk that's slightly outside of where I feel comfortable right now. And then it paying off or not paying off and you still going and trying something else anyway and continuing to sort of go down and, and move forward and make more mistakes and learn more. Um, and I think that's, that's where it really comes from, where you have that confidence in yourself. It's through the reps. It's through the the continual failures and the getting back up and then the eventual success. It's not success every day from day one perfectly. That's yeah, <laughs> fuck no. Yeah, and I think that's another good point to bring up is that like something like the mentorship is it brings up kind of like like a safe space to to share your failures and so that you don't like – live in a silo with them because easy with other shit just to like be like ah oh, this didn't go well and then just not really know what to do next and then when everyone's just like there's been certain weeks where we all hop in the call and we just all talk about how much shit we ate that week you know we like oh you fucked up you fucked up we like we all just happen to fuck up on the same week and it, that can happen just as much or just as regularly as people coming in and sharing their big successes um so having the chance to be to work through those failures and you work through enough of them like 
Um, there's been situations where I haven't now, now I'm just like, Oh, I don't need to message Zen about this frantically. Hopefully like, hopefully I can reach her in time. Cause I was like, yeah, I got this. I'll figure it out. This, mm-hmm. the situation sucks. I would prefer to have some guidance, but odds are by now I'll figure out something that works for me. Which is just, yourself. yeah. And that's just from putting the reps in and having someone show me how to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think that to touch on that as well, I was going to mention, you know, like the fact that there is such an incredible group of humans that I am blessed, um, you know, have chosen me to be the one to guide them and to have fostered a a group of humans who are open and vulnerable with each other and who, you know, will call each other outside of sessions when someone's having a shit day and like let them know that it's okay, even though that you live on the other side of the world. And, you know, I feel like, I've spent so much time with you. I feel like I really know you, but we've never actually been physically in the yeah. same room together, which is weird. Yeah. Um, but I feel, I feel that even over over Zoom calls and and conversations, that the relationships that we create, not just you know myself with you and everyone else, but you guys with each other, I think is is the cool thing to see is that you are all willing open honest and like you said willing to say I fucked up or I need help and not feel ashamed from the things that you think that you're you know you may be hiding in your business because you know that you really didn't do that well with one client you really fucked up and to be able to come into a group where there isn't that judgment and there's literally just love and support going like hey like it's okay we'll work through it Like, let's figure out a way to, you know, make that not happen next time. Um, I think that's the coolest thing about being in something like a mentorship. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. (laughs) Um, How have things changed for you in terms of, like, client numbers? We obviously 600 to 600 bucks to 17K. There's been a lot of change, but, like, Talk me through some of maybe the the bigger changes or, or the new things that are coming up for you that I'm very excited about um, in terms of actually scaling now. Yeah. So right now I'm just, so the goal for the last little bit since starting um, with the mastery program was just getting me overflowing with clients and I'm pretty much there. Like I, if I have any more clients, I might, you know, find one in the toilet because it's just like they're just coming out everywhere um that was a weird visual but um <laughs> <laughs> i heard that everyone else um, is laughing yeah me too me too <laughs> um but yeah so i'm just looking at my total client list i have some that are just kind of on hold but it's it's around the 40 mark um so i have multiple clients like that does seem like a lot um but I have multiple clients that are two-on-ones that have very, very similar programs. So that kind of like having a two-on-one helps me be able to program a little bit easier. So it doesn't take up as much time. And that's something um, you weren't doing at the start. You weren't, you weren't doing yeah. two-on-ones. You were still doing massage therapy. Yeah. Now it's fully exercise-based. We have some online yeah. stuff. Like there's been lots of growth and changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me, I guess I can start about at the beginning. So <laughs> yeah. So I was doing... Um, so yeah, when I was doing lots of massage, it was, you know, spending a lot of time with people who just weren't getting better. I would just like see people come in like the usual and it's like, all right, um, close the door. And then, you know, I, I got to a point with massage that I was just so uninvolved with it that I could just like, I figured out how, on what shelves, what rooms I could fit, set up my phone so I could watch Netflix while giving me a massage because I was just like so disconnected from it. And just because people just don't get better. You know, people are just coming in and just like rinsing and repeating and wondering why they don't get better. And a lot of my initial clients were like the I still have with me today were people who came in for a massage. And it, as I transitioned into more personal training clients, they 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 started doing more personal training sessions. And now they've now they've been clients for like over two years. Um so now I yeah, I'm at capacity and then some. Uh, with clients, I'm doing a lot of two-on-ones, pretty much all two-on-ones, because that's all I really have space for. Um, got to a point where I just couldn't justify having only one client at a time. 
which is a pretty cool place to be in, especially because there used to be weeks where I would just be so scared of a losing a client, b not being able to find one. Like there's just now I'm just like when a client cancels, I'm just like, oh thank God. Like I just I can like you I can have a bit for of a, a second. Yeah. But there's yeah. there's a reason why we wanted you overflowing, right? So let's talk about that. Um, because you wanted to yeah. scale. Um yeah. so what is that what is that looking like at the moment for you? So, uh, so scaling for me means bringing on a coach, um, bringing on someone to work under me to that I can like a little grasshopper type person or just someone that's like a peer, but someone that's willing to work together on creating a, a standard of, of care that we just didn't, we haven't seen or aren't seeing and just, um, creating an open line of communication, um, between multiple practitioners. Cause usually when you go to a clinic or people that like, and I still, I want to maintain my massage therapy for as long as I can, so I can keep my scope of pain in my scope of practice. Um, but usually when you go see a clinic and they say, well, we take a holistic multidisciplinary approach. It's like, no, you fucking don't like most <laughs> like, no, no, you don't like, you'll just refer them and you'll kind of talk about it. But it's like, it's not like there's a lot of people talking, but for like the only way to have a, multidisciplinary like holistic approaches if there's a standard of practice a standard of care that you're all maintaining mm. so that's what i'm working on right now i've um i've in talks with the coach um to bring him on um just need to kind of iron out the details need to eventually start any new clients that are coming my way from here on out or just going to him so Amazing. that's pretty i haven't said that out loud but that's a, that's a that's a swift moving academy first here, guys. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just because if I have need to recognize, that I won't be able to provide a good service to my current clients um, if I take on any more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I want to head. Um, I'm also thinking about opening up my own space now. Just that's news to me, it, which is very exciting. Yeah, you this is also it. a first. There's lots of firsts. You got the exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah just some things over the last little bit I just feel like it'll be the best way for me like because no matter what when you work in someone else's space you're going to run into their rules whether whether they're they make sense or not and like there's certain things like okay I understand like your hands are just tied in this situation like like what can you do um and there's nothing that person can do who owns the gym but for me I'm just like well there's, there's something I could do you know, if I'm limited to two on ones at this gym, because those are the rules, I'm like, well, if I had my own space where I could have three on ones, four on ones, and then that would also free up my time and allow me to, you know, make my own rules, be my own man. Mm. Be, like, you already so. are very much. Hell alone. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but the cool thing with that is also just having the the mindset of like, I get to create my own rules. Like as yeah. you becoming an entrepreneur, not just a business owner or a, your personal trainer who does some sessions, right? Like we start to create this actual genuine entrepreneurial mindset where we go, well, if I don't like the situation, there are some things I can change and some things I can't change. Mm -hmm. And what are the variables I get to play with? And obviously you acknowledging that like, I can't change the, the, situation of some of the things in the physical location I'm at but the other options that I have seem almost limitless when you really think about it and I know that we were talking today um, on our scale call um, and we we're talking about the fact that you know where do you actually want to be in five years time and something that I, obviously you couldn't make our call today but something for you as well is like Let's work backwards from there as opposed to going, well, I'm already stuck in this situation. I have to take more clients on. I have to do this. It's like, well, if you could start again, what would you do? And would you still make money in the same ways? Would you still service the same people? Are there people that you're probably thinking about this you need to let go because they're not servicing where you want to be in five years? And the cool thing about, you know, some of the conversations that we have in the scale group is like, well, I don't need to take on new clients so I can choose who I take on. I don't have to take on the people who really drag me down or who are really, you know, not really investing as much into me as I am into them. Um, and so I think, you know, choice is a huge thing when we get to open up our eyes and our opportunities to that that's 
a huge thing that most people never really get to do because they're stuck in everyone else's choices that are made for them. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. And like, yeah, as things start to go well, choices just seem a little bit more realistic. Um, you can know, like, I feel like, like looking back, I feel like I could have always made the choice to maybe head in this direction to open up my own facility, but it just never seemed necessary. It never seemed, it never seemed possible, but it also didn't seem necessary. But as things start to grow and you get to be confined by other people's rules and you realize that rules are dumb and you can just make <laughs> up your own. Like, <laughs> I love that. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah. Like it's easy to be like, well, it's a liability reason. It's like, yeah, but like you could change that. Like it's like so. You just, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, like it's nice to be in a place where you can make up your own rules. But I wish I'd started making them up sooner, probably. Because hmm. um, just if I had that idea earlier, it just would be a much smoother transition. But I think it was, you know, no discredit to you. It was that we all have to go through that process and we can't yeah. immediately from day one, most of us aren't going to make all these decisions. We have to grow, step out of the comfort zone, like I said before, and then you go, oh, that's possible. I wonder if I can push this boundary and how do I navigate that scenario? So um, it come, brings me to another topic I wanted to ask you about because I know that this is a challenge that a lot of coaches have, price rises. We resisted this for a long time and then we've yeah. done it multiple times in the last two years. I would love you to talk through your thoughts about it, um, your resistance, your hesitation and, and how you feel now. Yeah, um, I think it's it's the only way to really grow. Like you can't, like no one, it, it's the only way to make sure that you are also providing a high quality service to your clients. So it's almost, it's not only even about your price, it's the value that you're providing. Like when I first increased my price and I had a client show up and this was like, this is when I increased, I, I increased my price by $10. I had my first client coming at this new rate. And um, I was just so, so ready to like provide the best fucking service I can. And my, my price has gone up $30 an hour since then. So like having those clients who are like, okay, they're willing to show up and pay this price that you thought was silly. And then you're just like, okay, well, if they're willing to pay it, I'd be, I have to be willing to show up. And that, goes that's both what it ways, comes down to. Right? Like yeah, you, yeah. you go, fuck, if someone's going to pay me $130 versus $60, mm -hmm. the way that you perceive that value of that, that they're giving to you, it makes you want to show up more versus, I don't know, maybe massage where like, fuck, I'm just doing this because I have to. And it's, you know, a tire kicker kind of scenario. Um, you were going to say something? And the, and the, yeah, yeah. And the people who want the higher service will stay. Like the people who don't need the higher price service, like they're probably better off with someone who doesn't want to increase their price or wants to keep their prices at a nominal level. Like uh, one of my clients, he's retired on like a pension for each from working an office job. He's not doing great but he he realized that this is a valuable service so he's willing to figure it out anytime i increase my price like he we've changed he's gone down from three in-person sessions to two in-person sessions and does online for the other two for two more sessions but he still wants to show up because he believes in the service so that like the price doesn't make a difference in that regard as to like if you want to keep people that's that's the real way to keep people because you want to keep the people who actually want to show up and, and I think like obviously you can you can not change your prices and you can service more people but as one single human you can you, you only have a capacity of yeah. how many you can serve and it's also your own choice as to how like the level of service that you want to give them right and it's this isn't to say mm -hmm. that everyone has to be charging you know two hundred dollars a session and that's not the goal the goal is to make sure that you, are, you know, if you want to educate yourself, if you want to provide a super quality service, you're not going into Louis Vuitton and asking for the discount rack. Like you know that the value or the perceived value at least is there and you know that there's quality, you know that you get a level of care when you walk into the store, they treat you like royalty and you can choose where on that spectrum. If you want to go to there, you want to go to like Costco, right? Like it's a totally mm -hmm. different scenario and there will be people who will be attracted to each. However, I think when it comes to our health and especially if you're working face-to-face -face and you are 
giving up your time for that, there's a whole lot of value there. And there's a whole lot that we don't, I guess, value ourselves on that's outside of the fucking program that you wrote and the fact that you watch them squat and correct their technique. Like the the psychological support, not being psychologist, but being that accountability buddy for them, like you said, and and all the, you know, being a support person for them and the community that you create and and everything that is in and around or outside of exercise prescription is really the reason why people love you and come back to you because they could go to anyone else at the gym who charges half the price and be doing the same thing, which is why he can make 17K off of 40 clients because they're high value, high touch point. And we are really riding that red line at the moment. So we have to find a coach because we want to continue to provide a higher quality service. And so choosing where you sit on that spectrum, if you want to see 20 clients a week and charge $200 a head or 40 clients a week and charge $100 a head, like how much more if you had twice the amount of time per client to be able to add value, provide a service, what more could you do that would add the value? And so I think that, you know, what you said was was spot on in terms of the price is equivalent to the value. And, you know, sometimes we need someone else to believe in us first by putting our price up and someone saying, yeah, I'll pay that. And then you go, oh, I am worth what I've, what I've said I'm worth. Because, you know, I said to you a hundred times that you were absolutely worth more than that, but it wasn't until someone physically handed that money over to you, I don't think, until we actually believe that we're worth that price. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. And like, um, it's, it's also kind of exciting to increase your price too. Cause you're just like, all right, motherfucker, like, let me earn it. Like, it, it, even if you have those, even if you do increase your price and you still don't feel comfortable with it, it's like, that's your chance to kind of step up. Mm. Like, and if you don't want that chance to step up, that's fine. That's fine. But if you want that chance to make sure that your service is worth what you're charging, then, then and go for it. You're not going to be as incentivized to increase the quality of your service if you just keep it at 50 bucks an hour, 60 bucks an hour. Yeah, absolutely. So, and most people like $10 is like a freaking coffee these days, you know, like the value yeah. of, of of that. And, you know, I've worked out this and crunched the numbers with so many people before. Literally the other day, someone who signed up for our um, our growth academy, I was like, oh, well, there's twelve and a half thousand dollars I just made for you by increasing your prices by $5. And she mm-hmm. was like, oh, fuck. I was like, so the mentorship's basically free. Um, she's like well I'm in then so um you know like it's it's just little shifts and things that I think that mentorship can be really valuable for for being like fuck it let's go and let's say you lost at worst five ten percent of your clients you usually end up better off more time and more ability to service people at a better level by increasing the price you I I'm yet to hear of someone who's actually had more people drop off and not people take them up on the new rate to the point where they're actually worse off. Um, yeah, and it's always and it's always kind of worth taking a step back to take two steps forward, anyways. And that's what it kind of can be as well. Like, um, I recently increased my prices, and I have a client stepping away. But you know, t- like less than two weeks later, I had three clients looking to reach out. For- like who reached out to me looking to work with me or through leads, pardon me. So I was just like, okay, it's already, already fixed, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and that was a client I was traveling to and these are three online clients. So it's like, okay, this is, I just saved so much time. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. And have, I'm now making the same amount of money. So um, and it's an uncomfortable conversation. Like increasing your prices for me always feels like shit, especially because a lot of my clients are friends. So I have to be like, Hey buddy. Um, Nice seeing you on the weekend outside of work, but, and thanks for buying me that drink, but now you actually have to charge, <laughs> I'm going to have to charge you more. Um, it's super uncomfortable, but like this is an industry and well, just life in general, but especially this industry is based off uncomfortable conversations. Like you have to really tell your clients when they're, you know, not, not doing what they're supposed to as far as like nutrition or like feel like when you see your, your client not pull their, like you could have done an extra rep there. Like that's, that's, is on its own like kind of a tough conversation telling someone they didn't try hard enough. But and that's also so our just, job, right? To coach them. Yeah. 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 
and like, but to also maintain your own integrity and what you're worth is important for them as well. And so imagine, like understanding that everything goes up in price, petrol's gone up astronomically. Yeah. And so people understand that shit's going up in price. This, what you pay for your coffee now is not what you paid for it five years ago. Yeah. And so everyone understands and they're expecting it. So when you don't do it, at least annually, as per the the cost of, you know, inflation, you should be at least going up by that much so that you can afford and continue to sustain. Because the worst part that I see people who aren't willing to maybe have those tough conversations or who want it, you're like, no, they're a loyal client. I'm going to keep them on $50 for an hour. They end up going out of business and they can't help anyone. And that's the shit that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, the the price is is just a vehicle for the value. And if you are looking to provide exceptional value, the price should be accordance with that. If you want to provide, you know, run-of-the-mill value, run-of-the-mill price might suit you. But like, you know, if you want to go and do these courses and upskill yourself and become better and get better results for people in a faster, quicker time, people are willing to pay for that. People are willing to pay a premium if you can get them to lose 10 kilos in 10 weeks and keep it off rather than 10 kilos in 52 weeks. So, you know, like time is our biggest asset. And so people will pay to speed up or accelerate their results. And that's what everyone does with personal training because they know the personal trainer knows more than they do and they're trying to accelerate their results. So it just depends on how fast they want to accelerate those, I think. Yeah. And like, and like with one of my the client I just mentioned who is like moving on, she's found another personal trainer who just costs less. So it's like, I'm like, oh, I feel like I kind of did my job then. Like, like you didn't really work out before. Now you're finding another like she just doesn't need a high value trainer. She doesn't need someone that costs that much, which is fine, which is totally great. There's lots of clients out there like that. There's also lots of clients who are willing to pay more. Like there's no, it's not like this like like void of clients. Mm. There's there's people out there who are willing to pay for it and just believing that more clients will come. And in those moments when you don't have more clients, it's like, okay, what can I do to just really help out the clients I do have? Yeah. No, I love that. I think that we way, will leave it there. That's a that's a huge, yeah. huge chunk of information. And I hope people have, have got a ton out of it. My last question for you is what would you say to someone near and dear to you if they were uh, in the health industry or a coach of any sort who were considering joining um, our business mentorship what would you say to them I definitely see yeah I definitely see my life as like it's tough because I met my fiance right around the time that we started <laughs> so <It's not. laughs> um, like like honestly a month after we started. So um, it's a mixed bag, but I definitely see my life as it was before I started the, the mentorship program and after. And everything that's happened after has just been, um, just been nothing short of amazing as far as, uh, as I mentioned, believing in myself, seeing how much better my clients have gotten um how much better was, like just understanding that i can provide a good service to my clients like just giving me a chance to show up to do something that i love every single day has been the greatest opportunity i wouldn't be able to do it without this mentorship because i probably would have quit <laughs> so um we have a quit like, list talk about that really yeah. quickly <laughs> uh, oh yeah so i on on some tougher days sometimes i'll just write down i feel like quitting today and the date I haven't written that. I, I forgot about it until right now. So I haven't like I. So that's a good sign. And um, if I want to correlate anything to uh, my fiance, it's just like I don't think I would have been as ready to be a good partner if not for this mentorship, or at least facilitated that because I wouldn't have been able to show up for myself. And if I can't show up for myself, I can't show up for another person. So having something that forced me to show up for myself every single week kind of went hand in hand with meeting the person I'm about to marry. So, um, yeah, That's I have to tie that in somehow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give Hillary <laughs> some credit. She's definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not the only one who's, who's helped you get yeah. to where you are. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, 
I always love to finish this with a little bit of like a take home or something that's actionable because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, I'm huge on actually taking action. So yeah. do you have anything that you think for like new coaches or coaches who are maybe considering mentorship, something that they can action to take the next step in their journey to become a better coach or, or who they want to be? Um. Mentorship specific or like something that I learned in mentorship? Just in just in business, like something yeah. that you think would be helpful for for anyone who's listening um to to take the next step. Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is therapy. <laughs> it's just like make sure you're you're you've gone to therapy because the better you understand yourself, the better you'll be able to relate to your clients, which I think is really important. And the better you'll be able to admit fault and like just connect and be empathetic. I think that's super important. But as far as just like taking a step towards business, it's it's the simplest thing is just to increase your price. It's just to know your worth. And if you have doubts with increasing your price, like figure out what that doubt is and then do something about that. Like don't let this imposter syndrome hold you back from doing something because that imposter syndrome is telling you exactly what you need to work on. So if you don't feel comfortable in, uh, increasing your price, you need to figure out why. Like why don't you think you're worth it? And then and that will help you then feel more comfortable to then increase your price. I love that. All right. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for jumping on, Keith. Yeah, I thank you for having appreciate me. This is great. All time. Um, yeah. Also, where can people find you? If they want to chat to you, hang out with you, yeah. send you a DM. So I'm at Keith Downing underscore on Instagram. That's probably just the easiest way to find me. Um, so it's just, yeah, my full name, no spaces with an underscore at the end. Okay. Um yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. All righty. I will see you next time we are on a mentoring call. Sounds good to me. See ya. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, it'd honestly mean the world to us if you could share it with a friend or on your socials, follow and leave a quick review so that we can bring you more real, raw and uncensored stories from industry leaders. We also love hearing your feedback. So please DM us on Instagram at Swift Coaches Academy if you have suggestions for future guests or topics. Until next time and in whatever you do, move swiftly.